What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about ancient Egyptian festivals and why they were not only religious experiences, but also social, sensory, and visceral experiences. Welcome to the Dead Speak Online, where we demystify the words and lives of the ancient Egyptians through animated videos. If you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe so you don't miss future videos like this one. Thanks for joining me today, guys. In today's video, I'm first going to talk about what kinds of festivals and holidays the ancient Egyptians celebrated, and then later on, you'll get to find out what it was like to actually attend one of these festivals. Did the ancient Egyptians party like it was 1999 BC? We'll find out. So let's jump right in. The first thing to know about ancient Egyptian festivals is that they were not all the same everywhere throughout the country. Some festivals were celebrated all over Egypt, while others were celebrated only in a particular town. Also, some festivals were celebrated just once a year, say, just like our New Year's or other national holidays in modern times, while others were celebrated on a regular basis, such as every month, and linked to the phases of the moon. After finishing this video, I recommend heading over to the Nile Scribes blog to learn all about ancient Egyptian calendars and how they marked the passing of time and when to celebrate these festivals. I'll include a link to that post in the video description below. The central event for most of these celebrations was a procession, basically a parade of sorts, in which the statue of a god was paraded around in a boat that was carried by priests. Now this was a time when the average Egyptian could actually get somewhat close to the statue of the god in which the god actually resided. And this is because normally ancient Egyptian temples were not places that the average person could enter and just wander around. They couldn't go into the inner parts of the temple where the god actually resided. However, even though they could get fairly close to the god during these festivals, they still never actually saw the statue because it was covered by a curtain that hung around the shrine that sat inside the boat. Despite the average person not being able to actually see the god, a lot of these festivals actually included times when people were allowed to approach the god and ask him a question and also receive an answer. The god's boat would sway forward for yes and backwards for no. Of course, the priests who were carrying the boat were really in control of its movement, but we shouldn't dismiss this as a purposeful fraud the way we might view it in modern times. Now, if you've ever played with a Ouija board as a kid, you'll know that when you have lots of people with their hands on that pointer, even if nobody's intentionally moving it, the slightest vibration of the hands can make it move slowly across the board, and everybody just kind of goes along with it. Similarly, if one priest moved even just a little bit, whether on purpose or not, the others might feel that movement and allow themselves to basically go with the flow, so to speak, causing the boat to move noticeably forward or backwards. The questions people asked the god could vary from everything from small domestic family issues to larger issues like deciding a court case. In some cases, festivals lasted as long as 14 days, that is a full two weeks and they included a series of events in addition to the procession that we just talked about, such as dramatic reenactments of mythological stories about the god, singing and dancing, and elaborate feasts with otherwise unprecedented amounts of rich foods and drink. In some places and times, there could be as many as 60 festival days a year. That comes out to one out of every six or seven days on average. It's basically like having one holiday day a week all year long. So let's take a look at one of the bigger festivals that ancient Egyptians celebrated, the beautiful Feast of the Valley. The beautiful Feast of the Valley was a once a year festival that was held only in Thebes during the early summer. The main focus was a procession of the god Amun, whose parade traveled from the east bank of the Nile, across the river to the west bank to visit the goddess Hathor and spend the night there. This journey from east to west symbolized the transition from life to death to the afterlife. But this festival was not just about the gods, it was also about the dead. As the procession made its way around the West Bank, musicians and the audience that followed made a huge amount of noise to wake up the dead and get their attention. People would then go and visit the tombs of their family members and have a big feast meal with them as a way of communing between the living and the dead. This also celebrated the dead's continued ability after their rebirth into the afterlife of being able to enjoy food and drink and the smell of flowers. 
This part of the festival can be compared with modern practices still in use in Egypt today, as well as also celebrations in other parts of the world, such as modern Day of the Dead and All Saints Day celebrations. So what was it actually like to attend an ancient Egyptian festival? Well, in many ways you could compare it to attending a modern Mardi Gras or Carnival celebration because it was not just a religious experience, but a way to break away from the everyday norms and accepted behaviors. During festivals, everything was bigger, louder, smellier, sexualized, and dramatic. You could do things during festivals that would not usually be acceptable things to do. Ancient Egyptian literature typically counsels self-control, but in the context of festivals and celebrations, ancient Egyptians were encouraged to follow their hearts and party hard. Festivals very often involved not just a procession, but also a lot of drinking of alcohol, feasting on rich, expensive foods, wearing tons of flowers, burning piles of incense to perfume the air, playing music, singing, and dancing. I bet at this point you're probably wondering, how do I get an invitation to one of these? In a scene painted on the wall of a tomb of a man named Paheri at El Cobb, a group of family members are shown smelling flowers and receiving bowls of alcohol to drink as part of the beautiful feast of the valley. A caption to the scene says, For your ka, drink to drunkenness, make a holiday. While a man attending the feast says to a servant, Give me 18 cups of wine! And another relative says, Drink, don't spoil the entertainment, let the cup come to me. Perhaps one of the most vibrant descriptions of an ancient Egyptian festival comes from a text at the Temple of Horus at Edfu, and it paints this picture. There are all kinds of bread in loaves as numerous as grains of sand. The smell of roasted meats reaches the sky. Wine flows freely throughout the town like the Nile bursting forth. Myrrh scattered on the burner with incense can be smelled a mile away. The city is strewed with faience, glittering with natron, and garlanded with flowers and fresh herbs. Its youths are drunk, its citizens are glad, and its young maidens are beautiful to behold. Rejoicing is all around it, and festivity is in all of its quarters. There is no sleep to be had there until dawn. Now I want to turn it over to you. What family or cultural traditions do you follow for holidays and other celebrations? I'd love to hear about them, so leave me a comment in the comments area below to tell me about them. If you've enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.